So, uh, a lot of buzz around the film, of course, uh, and a lot of uh, other media houses from Bombay at least have touted the film to be uh, a film on, you know, the vaccine and it's about COVID. So, what is actually the vaccine war about? <coughs> you tell us. I'll tell you what it's not about. Okay. It's, <laughs> it's not about COVID. All right. Because, uh, see, the entire world was like almost shut down for two years. Correct. And while uh, India has managed to do phenomenally well post COVID, mm -hmm. uh, the world over it has not been a good news for anyone. Now, even if we are, we have to think about uh, not just the Indian audience, but the diaspora mm. uh, settling in different parts of the world, or the 101 countries that India has given free vaccine to, I don't think they would like to remember that time. So we have not spoken about COVID. We've only concentrated on how a bunch of scientists put in the best, uh, didn't, you know, see whether it was day or night, just kept standing in their lab, which in that whole gear where you can only survive for about three to four hours, but they stood in that gear for about 20, 20 hours yeah. at length and made India's indigenous vaccine in the shortest, uh, shortest uh, span of time. We made the vaccine in only seven months. Uh, Dr. Balram Bhargav, who was the uh, director general of ICMR mm -hmm. at that time, he was a man in a hurry. And with uh, correct intentions, because look at the amount of uh, population we have and the density of the population, where people are constantly in close contact. It's correct. not like uh, you know America, where uh, there is only one person <laughs> per one square mile or whatever. The density is maddening. I mean, there are at any given point in time, you will see at least a thousand people in front of your eyes. You know, in in that whole panoramic view. There are people who walk hand in hand, they put their hands on each other's shoulders. So we are a very different country. We don't care about, you know, any of the worldly norms or whether you'll be labeled as anything. We don't care. We are friends. We are going to put our arms around each other and walk. Hum thukenge raste pe. Hum sab kuch karenge. So, not just the time for the vaccine, but looking at the sheer number of people. The manufacturing, the distribution, the rolling out, and then inoculating uh, all the 135 crore mm -hmm. people with two shots. So this was a mammoth task, which was also going to take time. Hence, the vaccine had to be hurried. So he set impossible deadlines for all the people working under him. And then uh, those people, they in turn started expecting more from their juniors. <laughs> and their juniors started putting pressure on their juniors. So it kind of you know, became a cyclic thing. But in the end, everybody rose to the occasion. Yeah. Everybody, uh, you know, performed under pressure, and we had the vaccine, so the which is considered, is sorry, to be sorry. one of the safest in the world. So the film is also based on Dr. Balram's book, right? Partly, yeah. Partly. Okay. Yeah. So we've taken okay. incidents from that book, but we also went through very extensive interviews of all the uh, scientists, and then, from what they told us, you know, we also added those little things. Lovely. Because it was all a part of the same uh, you know, process. Could you share any anecdotes? I mean, if it's not uh, something, uh, you know, you have an NDA or something, if you could share some anecdotes that scientists, what they were actually going through. See, everybody had uh, uh, familial issues, you know, hmm. but they had no time for it because they had a country to save. <laughs> so there was this, the main scientist <coughs> who actually made the vaccine, <coughs> the name is Pragya Yadav. Apparently, her daughter has a eye condition which required surgery. Okay. And uh, India was in lockdown, and she had to develop the vaccine. So she and her husband is a neuro uh, neurosurgeon. He's a he's a neurologist. He's a neurosurgeon. Some he's a neurosurgeon, he's a neurosurgeon no? Dr. Sanjay, Pratyan's husband. He's a neurosurgeon. So. Both of them, I mean, it was very easy for them to just take their daughter to whichever yeah. hospital it could have been done on priority. But they kept pushing the surgery until after the vaccine was made. And her daughter in return, she started losing her eyesight little by little. But she kept telling her mother, don't worry about me, we'll take care of this, you first make the vaccine. And come home only when you make the vaccine. So such sacrifices that the families have made, you know, I mean, it, 
and she was a little girl so she didn't have to have those kind of uh, emotions but yeah the times are extraordinary and everybody put in their best uh, we've always done unconventional films that you found your audience the right audience I mean, so uh, do you think that people always believe that it's bollywood it's nach gana it's songs that finds its audience but i mean now that so do you think that <laughs> every there's an audience for every film every content that's even given out there of course you know there are two ways of looking at cinema i think some people look at uh, cinema only as an entertainment uh, sector um, some people like me look at it as as an art form so it all depends on when you go to the market you can uh, you can buy pictures and then you can buy paintings and uh, if you hang a painting in your house you'll never get bored of it because whenever you see it you'll find something new in it you look at the brush strokes you look at the light uh, and shade that the painter has used you look at the uh, what the fusion of colors that he's mixed you figure out that oh there is one little corner in this painting where the mood is completely different so there are so many things you know a painting is always discoverable and you keep finding new nuances because it's an art form similarly when it comes to uh, classical music or classical mm -hmm. dance any kind of art form a sculpture i look at cinema as an art form where you can you know keep revisiting the same art form and keep finding newer nuances but if you're just going to look at entertainment then it's like i mean if you watch a circus you know then elephant is going to do some kind of stunts in the first show and then in the second show and in the third show sometimes the elephant will behave sometimes he may not behave that could be the only differential but essentially everything else remains the same so it depends on what you want uh, to uh, basically put inside your mind and your heart there is an audience for entertainment and there is a huge audience for art form also and i uh, know this not now but from when i started my career because i started with chamba nikhil mm. and i always keep telling everyone that had i started with ramesh sippy or <laughs> subhash gheri or any other commercial director maybe my thinking would have you know uh, changed completely maybe i would have been at a very different place today who knows but uh, because i worked with him at a very uh, impressionable age when i was about 16 i think my life took a different course my understanding of cinema changed so it is very difficult for me to just look at uh, nach gana all the time i like it i romance as a genre is very beautiful i mean all of us i'm sure like chick flicks but <laughs> but to a certain extent i mean beyond that you can't you can't keep doing the same thing you have also done a fantastic uh, uh, television series called alpaviram which continues to remain uh, you know uh, etched in a lot of people's minds including mine mm -hmm. um never got back to television doing those kind of series because definitely the content uh, in television continues to be regressive uh, not until alpaviram fortunately yeah. even just the jewel for that just matter. the jewel also i mean uh, it, it completely changed the course of uh, television and how story or so content could be shown on a you know regular daily drama or so so yeah. that was also partly based on true story if correct me if i'm wrong alpha drama alpha drama was based on true incident true incident uh, yes see what i I'll, i'll tell you what happened when television came into being it mm -hmm. was they were still called sponsored programs and <laughs> not television series they were essentially weekly correct and then uh, the max was very clear we have 52 weeks in a year so we divided by 4 and then you give 13 episodes each <laughs> so each quarter you have a new series so that's how they had uh, uh, you know first decided to bring about a certain amount of uh, freshness every four months mm. um so for every week uh, we had only one episode and had ample of time to shoot had mm. ample of time to right to think about to improvise every writer had to only come up with four episodes a month which was wow. still a uh, uh, how do you say uh, a tough job because four episodes still means about one and a half hours which was more than half a film mm. but they had to turn that 
in a month, month after month. So that was a daunting task in any case. But it was still being done because you could plan it earlier. Mm. Suddenly the day weeklies went out, you know. And we had such brilliant subjects, brilliant directors. There was Govind Nailani, there was Shant and mm. There was uh, Ramesh Sipi, there was this Hamlok series with uh, Manavarsham Joshi. Then there was Kavita's uh, Udan, Udan series. series. Uh, I made a series called Aruhan. Uh, there was Rajni and there was Tarpan <laughs> and there was God knows. I mean, there were just so many of wonderful series that we've seen. And then suddenly with the advent of Daily Soap, what happened was that you had to start churning out 26 episodes a month. Now imagine the writer, 26 episodes, it's like writing three films in a month, <laughs> which is crazy, you know. And to think about subjects, to think about the plot, to think about different characters, I mean, <laughs> I seriously wonder. And hence to make their life easy and to make uh, the life of the producer easy so that you know she or he don't have to go into extensive sets. Everything started happening within one hour. Yeah. So Ekta found out the best you know uh, time and money saving uh, device ke saas bahu pe aap series bana do. And from there it was just a, a downhill, uh, what do you say, role. Palavi ji, in the last 2-3 films, you have chosen such a subject that you have chosen, that are related to the public, are related to the real life, and uh, uh, your role is related to the grey shed, or people have so much liked it, what do you want to say about it? I would like to say thank you. I would like to say thank you. जैसे मैं भी कह रही थी कि वास्तविकता से मैं बहुत मैंने आईडेंटिफाई किया है हमेशा और मुझे ऐसा लगता है कि फिल्में जो हैं वो सोसाइटी का दर्पण है तो हमारे इर्दगिर्द जो हो रहा है या जो होना चाहिए या जो परिवर्तन आने चाहिए या जो बीत चुका है कुछ भी हो आपको उसके बारे में उसकी छवि आपको सिनेमा में देखनी चाहिए तभी आप उसके साथ रिलेट कर सकते हैं या तो फिर बिल्कुल ही आप मार्वल बना दीजिए कि मतलब कोई ऐसा आयन मैन एग्जिस्ट ही नहीं करता तब फिर उसमें उसको भी देखने में मजा आता है रोमांस की एक अपनी जगह है जो भी है लेकिन एक कहीं तो अगर आप जिस देश से ताल्लुक रखते हैं जिस देश के आप नागरिक हैं उस देश के बारे में उस देश के लोगों के बारे में उस देश की समस्याओं के बारे में या उस देश की विक्ट्रीज के बारे में कहीं तो कुछ आपको कहीं तो आइडेंटिफिकेशन होना चाहिए उसके साथ तो मेरा हमेशा यही रहा है कि मतलब बहुत ही अगर सिंपलिस्टिक तरीके से बताऊं तो अपनी मिट्टी की कहानी होनी चाहिए <laughs> इसमें मेरे, मेरी हमेशा से उसी में रुचि रही है और थोड़ा सा ग्रीडी भी हूँ तो उसे इतना ही नहीं मेरा कैरेक्टर भी उसमें अच्छा होना चाहिए फिर तो पिछले दो तीन बार से ऐसा हुआ कि बताइए ना ट्रैफिक जाम में I played a very nice woman a very naive woman who didn't know that her husband is an axel तो मैंने विवेक को कहा यार बहुत मतलब फिल्म तो बहुत अच्छी थी लेकिन वो लास्ट का जो सीन था अरुणोदय और ऐसा कुछ करने को मिले तो मजा आ जाएगा सुंदर। उसके बाद कह रहे हैं उन्होंने ताशकंद लिखी ताशकंद में there was no character for me। विवेक एक थोड़ा अब रात ना शाह। तो मुझे कहता है कि नहीं बी नेड एन ओल्डर वोमेन फॉर दिस तुम मंदिरा का रोल करो। तो मैंने कहा नहीं आई कैन प्ले मंदिरा का रोल बिकॉज़ यू नीड a very yes <laughs> you need and I actually said you said you need somebody like you know mandira bedi or you know puja uh, bedi or you know एक कोई ऐसी personality चाहिए उसमें मैंने कहा मैं बहुत ही girl next door लगती हूँ I won't be able to look like that so करते करते then finally Mandy was cast for that and Ratna से contact because Nasir was anyway doing the film then I fought tooth and nail. When actually the script came in front of me, I said, I'm going to do this role. 
And he said, you're mad at what? She's a historian. She's about 60. She has to be an old woman. I said, I'll paint my hair white. <laughs> I don't care. <laughs> or men, just to prove a point, I mean, it was very easy for me to wear a wig. But I went to the salon and my uh, stylist, she was like, are you crazy? You know, you're going to spoil your hair. I'll have to bleach them to death. I mm-hmm. said, do whatever. I need white hair for this. <laughs> So, Vichari ne kisi tarah se, she said, okay, ma'am, I'll top layer kar dungi, to andar ka to chup jayega, you keep your hair tied and this and that. I painted my hair white and then I, I actually did my own uh, audition at home. And I did like lots of makeup, zyada dark lipstick and eyes. So, then Vivek said, ye kya hai? I said, this woman is a cripple, you know, and so she has to overcompensate. Ki humko, हम तो नॉर्मल जिंदगी में हमें एक दूसरे को हम लोग साइज अप करते हैं ना पार्टी में जाके अरे उसने जरा मैं थोड़े कुछ ज्यादा तो नहीं पहन लिया मैंने या आई एम लुकिंग अंडर ड्रेस्ड मैंने फॉर अ वुमन हु ऑब्वियसली डजंट हैव लेग्स शी कांट वॉक शी विल हैव टू ओवर कॉम्पेंसेट तो वो मैं लिपस्टिक भी लगाऊंगी मैं काजल भी लगाऊंगी और मैं इस तरह से बात करूंगी आई सेड देयर इज अ लॉट ऑफ वेनम इनसाइड और इट हैज टू कम आउट एंड देन विवेक लाइक द आईडिया तब भी मैं इनफैक्ट पूछ रही थी उसको दैट डोंट यू थिंक आई एम बेटर ऑफ प्लेइंग शारदास कैरेक्टर मदर ऑफ दर्शन इन दैट सो विवेक वॉज वेरी क्लियर ही सेट आई वॉन्ट कश्मीरी पंडित वो जो है उसका जो इमोशन है नो मैटर हाउ हार्ड यू ट्राई नहीं आएगा मोस्ट प्रेशियस कॉम्प्लीमेंट दैट आई कुड रिसीव विवेक सर एंड यू आर अ वेरी स्ट्रॉन्ग टीम फ्रॉम I mean, we've just heard about it right now. So, uh, how important it is to support each other, not just at home, career-wise, also to make sure that you know both have equal share in it. Uh, it, it support के बिना तो कुछ नहीं होता ना इसमें. और मिया बीवी का रिश्ता तो बहुत ही अलग होता है. लेकिन आपको अपने घरवालों से भी कितनी support की ज़रूरत होती है. और जिनको वो support नहीं मिलता, वो बेचारे थोड़े से कहीं पे उनकी लाइफ में फ्रस्ट्रेशंस रहती हैं बिकॉज नहीं मिलता उनको सपोर्ट और जितना वो करना चाहते हैं शायद कभी कभी नहीं कर पाते सो आई थिंक सपोर्ट विथ फेथ एंड रिस्पेक्ट इज वेरी इंपॉर्टेंट काम हम दोनों एक साथ अभी करने लगे हैं फॉर द पास्ट फ्यू ईयर्स लेकिन जब uh, हम लोग अलग अलग भी काम कर रहे थे तब भी वी नेवर स्टॉप टीच अदर फ्रॉम डूइंग एनी थिंग आई मीन वे वी नेवर एवर टोल्ड मी कि go after quantity you know you just do like one uh, project a year you only do what your fancy takes and you know you should be working what never has he once told me that and i have never told him ki tum ye mat karo wo mat karo of course when we sit down and we are talking ke kaise hona chahiye then he has ideas about you know about me i have ideas about him we discuss that and we also sometimes take that advice mm. but that is only if we agree to it so there is no compulsion to support ke bina to kuch hota hi nahi and i think if you uh, realize the fact that your partners uh, 50 50 partners which should turn out to be 50 50 at the end of the day not like uh, the western scenario <laughs> where mere kapde dhoye to tum bartan do it's not that hamare indic uh, isme kya hota hai ki hum log there are days when you give 30% but you receive 70 there are days when you give 90 you receive only 10 but at the end of the day it should pan out to be a 50 50% relationship it cannot be a daily transaction but as long as you know that that is there in place and there is enough love respect and space and uh, support for each uh, each other to grow in life then That is the best thing that can happen. उसके बाद तो empowerment, liberty, ये सब सिर्फ शब्द रह जाते हैं उसके कोई मायने नहीं. True, actually it's always that you know women are asked questions that you know uh, men are usually, usually asked. Mm-hmm. Do you allow your partner to Part. work? So I don't think these are the kind of questions that we should ask anymore. I think right? we should stop asking such kind of yeah, questions. Yeah, we should rather be like, how much do you support each other? Yeah. 
और हमारे यहाँ क्या है ना देर इज ऑल्सो लिबर्टी एंड एम्पावरमेंट काइंड ऑफ ऑलवेज कंफ्यूज सी लिबरेशन कैन कम फ्रॉम अ लॉट ऑफ थिंग्स आप अपनी लाइफ में किस चीज से सबसे ज्यादा फ्रस्ट्रेटेड है उससे आप लिबरेशन चाहते हैं और आप किसी चीज से लिबरेट हो रहे हैं इसका मतलब ये नहीं कि आप एम्पावर्ड हैं तो अगर मुझे बचपन से मुझे सिगरेट पीना था पर मुझे किसी ने पीने नहीं दी वो एक रह गया और जिस दिन मैं सिगरेट पीने लगू मुझे लगा आज मैंने पी इतने साल के बाद दैट कुड बी अ मोमेंट ऑफ लिबरेशन फॉर यू बट दैट इज मेक यू एन एम्पावर्ड पर्सन यू नो आई मीन आई मैंने बहुत ही फालतू एग्जाम्पल दिया है बट इट कैन बी एज तो लिबरेशन को हम जितना सेलिब्रेट करते हैं उस शब्द को उसके मायने बहुत छोटे होते हैं लाइफ में एम्पावरमेंट इज समथिंग दैट आवर वुमेन हैव ऑलवेज हैड विच द वेस्ट वेस्ट डजेंट अंडरस्टैंड दे लुक एट अस फ्रॉम अ वेरी डिफरेंट लेंस दे ऑल्सो कंफ्यूज बिटवीन लिबर्टी एंड एम्पावरमेंट जस्ट बिकॉज अ वुमेन स्टेज एट होम आई मीन आई एम टॉकिंग अबाउट द होम मेकर्स तो जस्ट बिकॉज दे स्टे एट होम दे लुक आफ्टर देयर चिल्ड्रन एंड they decide to look after the house they are perceived to be uh, secondary to mm-hmm. men jo ki which is a ridiculous thing because since vivek and i we both work and are now with you know the crazy schedules that we are having i realize that my home is taking a beating and so are my children i'm not being able to spend any time with them isn't that important also in life so somebody has to take care of that and also that so hum what we do is then we end up spending more and more and then start getting a housekeeping staff and then get the most loyal of servants to work for you mm-hmm. and and also at the back of your mind you are always keep the big happy sub theek ho raha hai ki ko raha hai ki nahi when one of the partners is home the other is you know he has got wings to do whatever he want because he knows one end is secure so ye to mutual trust hai Now it all depends on the woman whether she is being forced to stay at home or she is doing it, you know, on her own volition. So <laughs> these are, I mean, I, I don't know. I, I don't know. <laughs> sorry, I can't. No, no, no. Usually, usually, you know, people say I'm a feminist, so I'm going to fight and I'm going to go out. But uh, what you are saying is, I think it makes sense. Feminism doesn't mean fighting. Exactly. You know, that's that's that. what this feminism is. Feminism is something which, which gives you the power to choose to make your own choices in life. even if it's sitting at home that is also feminism according to me because not everyone has a privilege also to yeah. you know, to be able yeah to i mean look at uh, the very typical middle class uh, houses now in case of arranged marriages the re- the first requirement is that the girl has to be working because dual income ke bina kuch hota nahi correct so that woman also has to work she also has to look after the house now i think men have started smartening up and <laughs> they also understand that you know, there is a certain amount of help that is required and mm. with the modern education system and whatever we see uh, around us so men have started becoming a little more understanding now but back in my time they weren't because it was common practice for a woman to take care of the house and for men to work outside so while they supported women working outside ghar ka kaam karne ka wo ha wo nahi tha conditioning nahi thi tab ab hone lagi hai and i'm glad about it my son will work palvi ji aap kaafi time se industry se judi hui hai to aapne apne kaun si timing ki acting ko sabse zyada enjoy kiya hai maine sab ko kiya yani aapki pasandida kaun si serials filme rahi hai jo maine main bataun इसलिए मैंने सिर्फ एक ही कैरेक्टर ऐसा किया है जो मुझे बिल्कुल बकवास लगा था क्योंकि मैं आ, मेरा वो मेकर के साथ झगड़ा हो गया था थोड़ा सा तो इट वाज द वर्स्ट टाइम बिकॉज आई हैड टू फिनिश माय कमिटमेंट बार इन दैट मैंने सारे जो रूल्स चूज किए हैं वो तभी मैंने उनको हाँ कहा है जब आई न्यू आई वॉज गोइंग टू एन्जॉय प्लेइंग वेन दे हैड सम सब्सटेंस इन इट सो आई हैव एन्जॉयड एवरी सिंगल कैरेक्टर एंड आई make a lot of friends on sets always because i like the sets to be a happy atmosphere to kaam kaam ki tarah nahi lagta hai aaram se nikal jata hai but i am always obsessed with my latest so until about 6 uh, months ago i thought kashmir files was the best now i think vaccine over is the best <laughs> okay um you know film making is a very risky business uh, both of you 
the duo, there is director producer. There is a lot of, um, while there is bookings, there is also criticism. <coughs> For you guys, there has also been a lot of uh, threats, so to say. Why I am quoting the threats word is because they have perhaps, in my understanding, come from people who have really not understood the film or have not seen the film or have just gone with the flow of what has been fed to them. Mm -hmm. How have the two of you faced these criticisms together? What are the thought processes and how do you go about telling or tackling uh, critiques, criticism, comments, negative anything in, in this world of social media content and where you know social media decides whether the film is a good, bad, ugly, whatever. Mm -hmm. How have the two of you as director producer uh, you know figured out the way forward and tackle these things? See everyone knows how Vivek does it. Okay. <laughs> as far as the reason why my question. <laughs> uh, but my way has always been you know keep a dignified silence and not talk about it. Let I mean there is a very famous uh, saying in Marathi that uh, I'll say it in English now, though. Let's that say it in both. <laughs> it, it's, it's, it means that uh, the dogs will always bark. Uh -huh. Even if you shut the front door, they will still keep barking. So what's the point? If you, you shut the door, you think that they'd stop barking. But it's just an illusion. <laughs> Let them bark. So I just... I'm in my Zen mode. <laughs> that <laughs> jo bolna hai bolo, that is your freedom of freedom of expression. That's your right of expression. As is mine. So don't stop me. You are no one to stop me. You have no power to stop me. I keep doing what I want to do until I can. And you keep doing what you can until you can. <laughs> <laughs> so live and let live is what I go by. But uh, Sometimes when it comes from very close quarters, from people you've known or mm -hmm. worked with, it hurts. And I'm making no bones about it. It hurts, but then you get over the hurt. <laughs> wow. <laughs> a, lot, a lot has changed over the years as far as storytelling is concerned. So, of course, the portrayal of women has also changed in cinema. Uh, what do you have to say about the change over the years? Because you've been a part of the industry for so many years. Um, I don't know how to say this without getting into controversy. <laughs> <laughs> see, I'll tell you what. Um, when we talk about portraying of women, those women should be normal women for us to talk about. What has happened in our films is that anytime you go to see a movie or you go to see a movie or even I go to see a movie where my profession is the same. I'm an actor. You guys are coming here. Um, immediately after that, we have to go out for our screening and everything. So I had to get ready in the morning. I had to do my makeup, my hair because my pictures are going to be clicked. So I come from that background and I've done this for donkey's years now. <laughs> But even then, when I see a very typical commercial film, I still look at the heroines as heroines. They don't come across as just plain women to me. Because I know I'll never be able to have that kind of figure. I'll never be able to look that way. I'll never be able to do that kind of hairstyle or wear those kind of clothes. So there is no identification with them. I only look at them like, like I used to look at Barbie dolls when I was a child. Okay. So that is, I, I don't even want to talk about that portrayal because that is not reality. So But when it comes to real women, when you see vaccine work, you'll see yourself in it. You'll see your mother in it. You'll see your neighbor in it, you know. Now that portrayal of women, that level, if you ask me questions about whether that portrayal is done very well, then I can talk about it. You see Lunchbox, and I thought that was a phenomenon. Uh, 
way of portraying that woman. Mm. I just loved her portrayal. Or if you see Tare's Amin Par, even that mother for that matter, I mean, it, it's a beautiful representation of how she, you know, Dear is a mother, but she realizes she doesn't know that her son has a problem, but she wants him to grow into a man. So, I mean, all these things, I think are wonderful because these are taken from real life. तो फिर बाकी आप मतलब आप कितना भी चिपनी चमेली करें और कुछ भी करें तो वो तो मतलब इसके बारे में कमेंट ही कैसे कर सकते हैं आप देर इज नो एस्पेक्ट ऑफ रियलिटी थिंग्स आर बेटर एज फार एज रीजनल सिनेमा इज कंसर्नकोर्स आई ग्रेटली एडमायर रीजनल सिनेमा मराठी स्पेशली हैज कम अप लॉन्ग वे एंड आई एम सो हैप्पी दैट दिस टीम इक्का इज डूइंग वेल नाउ Because it's high time, you know, Gujarati cinemas were a big thing when I was growing up. I have done so many Gujarati yeah. movies, but they seem to had disappeared in between. But I'm glad now with what the Chello show and mm. all these, it's coming up now because there is so much talent in Gujarati, you know. And regional cinema, I tell you, will always be rooted because that's why we have the regions, right? When the, a movie comes out out of Rajasthan, you will see Rajasthani culture in it. Mm-hmm. A movie coming out of uh, West Bengal, you will see Bangla culture in it. You will see Marathi culture in a Marathi movie. But when it comes to Hindi, they have to cater to every single state. Mm-hmm. So it becomes either a very great experiment or it becomes a mishmash of, <laughs> you know. Okay. And how long is it going to be before you before we see you you know take up a Gujarati script? Yeah, that is. I mean, whether to I, produce or I whether to act in it. Somebody approaches me with a Gujarati cinema or a, you know, I I was supposed to do a play long back. It never happened, and I'm so I still remember lines from that play. My idea was to do a movie like this. Wow. Varesh and I were supposed to do it together. It was just two people play. Oh wow. Written by written by Uttam Gada. But then I got busy <laughs> and Parish said that okay we'll wait. Then when I was free, he got busy and this kept happening for a year and a half and then we just stopped even trying. But you have to choose Gujarati, Hindi, Naitar, Marathi. So you have to choose Hindi. Hindi. Because with Hindi I can reach both the other audiences. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. So, do you do? You, are you also looking at exploring Ahmedabad today? Or are you I don't have tight? time. Although I have seen it, uh, you know, a lot of times. In fact, the last time we came, we went to uh, uh, we went for a cruise down the river also. Okay. Oh, so nice. I know Ahmedabad like the back of my hand. So. Mm-hmm.